it's Lori here. I'm here to do my August book haul. I will admit, August is my birthday month. So between some very delayed packages from BEA and ALA and all the giveaways I have signed up for, my birthday, some stress book shopping, and some book boxes, I have a pretty ambitious book haul for you. Um, the end clip in this video is going to be me like doing an unboxing of the Penguin Teen boxes that I got, which I purchased at one of their most recent events. Um, the, but I just, I, I'll be honest, I have a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> it's funny, I was talking to a friend of mine who we both like, go to conventions and stuff, and I've never bought this many books in my life, but it's because like so many book conventions got canceled, so... I have been buying a lot of books, I will be honest. I think it's probably going to curtail a little bit, but who knows? We will see what the world is like in a couple of months or this month. So I'm heading back to work next week, like in person in a building, which is good and bad. So we'll see how all that goes. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. The first book I wanted picking up was mostly from Harry Potter, um, from MuggleCast, and that is the Harry Potter character compendium from MuggleNet. Um, and this is literally like, if you are a Harry Potter fan from way back in the day, J.K. Rowling at some point told her, told us that we were going to get like, a, like a, um, a book that wrapped up every single like moment in the Harry Potter book. And it was going to be like, kind of like a Harry Potter encyclopedia. So this to me is as best as this is we're going to get right now. Um, but basically what it is, is it kind of lists every single character in this book, which I think it, like in the series, which I think is kind of cool. It's kind of like a nice, like, you know, um, it's just like a kind of like an encyclopedia. Like they're not calling it an encyclopedia, but that's kind of what I feel like. I read right now, I read about like 18 pages and I'm kind of kind of read it through it off and on. It'll probably take me a long time to read it, but it's great. And I think that they're hopefully from what I heard on that podcast, they're looking to come up with more unofficial books because they know that there's quite a hankering for them considering the choices JK Rowling has been making recently. But this was the first one that I picked up. It's beautiful, very, very, very nice formatted. And if you get the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition, there is some like very, very nice special edition content in this. So if you're gonna buy this, definitely get it from Barnes and Noble. Um, the next book I picked up or got, oops, most of these came from um, Simon and Schuster. I think I have another one. I can't find it right now. But this was like from like one of those packages I got from BEA. So the first one I picked up was Tune It Out by Jamie Summer. Um, and this is kind of a book themed around music. It's middle grade. It's supposed to come out in September. I am a theater teacher and I'm like, I work with a lot of music students. So it's entirely possible. I'll probably read this and I'll probably hand it out, hand it back to my kids. It's also the author of Roll With It. Um, but yeah, it has to do with music, it, it, but it looks like there's like a child protective element and performances. It's not that long, but it just sounds super cute. And this comes out in September. Uh, the next one that I was really excited for is The Black Kids by Christina Hammond Reed. And this is set in 1992 in Los Angeles. It's set in the backdrop of the Rodney King riot, um, riots. Um, follows a girl named Ashley. And up until that point, she's just, you know, she goes to a mostly white school in 1992. But after the Ron, Rodney King riots, her her experience in school starts to change. So it kind of follows that. And I think that that's really interesting. I'm really trying to diversify my reading life. And this one just seemed like a perfect addition to that. So um, yeah, this is one that I'm really excited to get my hands on and hopefully that I like it. And it comes out in September. Uh, another one that I got from Simon & Jusha was Shine by Jessica Jung, All Fair in Love in K-Pop. And this is written by an actual K-pop star and it's kind of a novel kind of I, I would say loosely inspired by her experience this comes out in October I'm definitely going to add this to my immediate TBR when I'm done with a couple contemporaries that I currently have on it I've read the Maureen Goo one that had to do with K-pop and I wound up really really enjoying it I know people had some really mixed feelings about that one but that wasn't the case for me but I really hope they like this one I, whenever I get around to reading it I do have another one from this package. When it pops up, I'll tell you guys because I'm pulling books from, out of a box. I also wound up for myself, I wound up buying Forest of Souls by Lee, Lori M. Lee. Um, this is about a royal spy. And then it's, it, 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 I think it has to do with like a royal spy. There's a forest involved. 
And then she winds up bringing her best friend back from the dead, I think. But it's a very, very dark story. And I'm kind of looking for some creepy reads. So I'll probably put this in my fall reads TBR as well and see if I get around to it. Um, but yeah, I just like that. I love books about assassins. That's like such a cool trope for me. So yeah, Forest of Souls by Lori Lee is the, Lori Emily is another one that I picked up. Perfect for Halloween. Um, these are two books that I got from the publisher because I was on blog tours. One was The Quiet You Carry by Nikki Barlamisis. Um, and this was a young adult contemporary dealing with a lot of hard issues like abuse, the foster care system. And I actually wound up reading the trilogy, the, the, the duology in August, really wound up liking it. A lot of trigger warnings for abuse. If you want more information about this book, check out my the, the second part of my August reading wrap up, but I wound up giving this one 4.5 stars. If you like books like Katie McGarry, this and the TV show The Fosters, this might be a very, very good read for you. I also was given a copy of Furia by Yasmin Saya Mendez, and this was another like contemporary theme novel around football set in Argentina. I talk about this a lot in my reading wrap up where I talk about The Quiet You Carry, so if you want more information about this book, go ahead to there because I just wound up reading it and my review will be posted in early September because I'm on a blog tour. Um, I also wound up watching a lot of Bookable's channel. Um, I think her name's Heather. And she turned me on to a couple of, you know, cute, fluffy adult rom-coms. And because I'm going back to work and I don't know what the stress level is going to be like, I did pick up a couple of just contemporaries just to have if I need like a little bit of a lighter read. So I picked up My Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee and Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This one has to do with um, a cupcake bar and this one has to do with a boo. And this one has to do with like a bakery, I think. Um, and they both are probably like love to hate romances. And I tend to like that trope. I think I'm more excited to read this one. But I will probably add these to my TBR if I need something like a, that. that's a little bit of like a palette cleanser. I told you guys I bought a lot of books. I apologize. Um, I also, for my birthday, one of my lovely persons I work with wound up getting me Girl Squad's 12 Female Friendships That Change History. This is just another like um, nonfiction read by Sam Maggs, and I love her so much. I'm, I really want to read more nonfiction. It's very, very quick, so I might actually wind up reading this one day on the train. It's not that long, um, but it's definitely, um, shows women, strong women in a lot of different environments, and I love books that focus on female friendships, because in life, there's so much about competition, and I really want to teach my students the importance of female friendship. So after I probably read this, I'll probably pass this on to my kids. Um, but yeah. Um, also, my friend Sam, if I'm remembering correctly, got me The Cursed Sea by Laura Stefano, which is the sequel to The Glass Spare. It's been so long since I read that. I still actually have it. So if I wind up, I'm just, I'm, I have to debate. I might actually wind up re-listening to it because it's been a while since I watched that. I remember I liked that book. Um, but then it never, like, popped up in my library or anything for me to, like, buy anything. I just kind of forgot about it. Um, but I did get this from for my birthday for my friend Sam and her sister Tiffany. So, thanks for that, girls. Um, this was another one that I got from Simon & Schuster. This is Kennedy and the, Kenny and the Book of Beasts. Um, and this is the sequel to Kenny and the Dragon. But I think it's just, like, a middle grade novel about two friends that maybe are, like, not you wouldn't think that they would be friends. Um, but this is by Tony Drisella, and this comes out in September. It's very, very short. I'll probably read it and pass it on to, like, the English teacher in my school. Um, but hopefully I like it. Um, I also wound up buying a copy of Wings of Fire, The Lost Air by 2D Sutherland. I wound up reading Wings of Fire a couple of months back, and I just saw it for $4 at Target, and I kind of just was like... I'll buy it. Um, I know the audiobooks are present, and now that I have a lot more listening time, I might actually listen to it, but I saw it and decided to pick it up. Um, I also wound up buying, um, Underline came, is coming out with a bunch of, like, paperbacks, um, so they're really, really short, and this one is called The Game by Lindsay Miller, and I used to play Assassin in my summer camp that I used to work at, um, but this game of gas this game of assassin in this book tends to have actual murderers involved which is so scary um but this is another book that i'm just going to kind of add to my fall tbr because it's not that long i think it's like 
like not even like I think it's like not even 200 like I think it's a little bit over 200 pages in it um but it's one that I'm definitely really excited to tackle so I will definitely add this to that TBR as well my friend Sarah, I think, also wound up getting me another mystery book, which is Last Seen Leaving by Caleb Rorig. I read White Rabbit and liked it. And this one is, in the wake of his girlfriend's disappearance, the spotlight is on him. And this is another mystery thriller. Flynn's girlfriend is missing and he's the prime suspect. I really liked White Rabbit. It was definitely a hard-hitting contemporary, not one that I was necessarily expecting, but really, really liked it. So I'm excited to finally read this one. Um, and I also wound up picking up a copy of The Whip Girl in the Witch's Garden by Erin Bowman. And this is a retelling of The Secret Garden. And I thought it looked so cute. And it's not that long of a read. I might add this to one of my TBRs in the fall because it looks like a quick read and probably a quick train read as well. Now that I am going back to work. This pile of books is going to fall. Um, I... Oh, okay. So... Um, also from Simon & Schuster in that package was Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is a fantasy novel about a girl named Bray. And I guess she she's going to, like, a residential program at UNC Chapel Hill. Um, and she winds up getting involved in this, like, group. And she winds up seeing something she shouldn't have seen, which involves monsters. But when the people can't mind trick her... She's revealed that she may be not be as ordinary as she originally thought. So this one is getting a lot of high praise. Comes out in September. High on my fall TBR. And I'll definitely be adding this to that. Um, I also picked up a nonfiction book. Which is one that I've had on my TBR for quite a while. And that is Atomic Habits. The Easy and Proven Way to Build Good Habits and Break Old Ones. I was in the process of reading a lot of nonfiction over the summer. I am still attempting to figure out my plan of attack with that for the school year now that I am physically working, but I do hope to still read nonfiction because I actually wound up really, really liking it. But this is one that I picked up at Target when I saw it. Oh my god, this pack of books is going to like fall. Um, and also my friend Sam and her sister Tiffany also got me Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. And this is a King Arthur retelling, I think, in space. And then the gift, um, my friend Sarah also got me The Last True Poets of Sea by Julia Drake. This is another mystery thriller. It was from Disney. I think it has to do with like a small island and kind of like a mysterious cursed family. Um, but yeah, so those are all the physical books. I Actually, I have two more to show you and one's going to be an unboxing. So I'm going to go organize these books and then I'll be back. Bye. So the second part of this a book book haul is going to be I'm going to unbox a couple of the book boxes that I got I'm going to be unboxing three for you um one is the thrills box from penguin teen which I got at their online convention that they did two weeks ago and I'm also going to be unboxing the fantasy one and then I'm also going to be unboxing the bookish bookish and the beast one that I got um from I'll have to look up the company but so I'm going to be unboxing three of them for you I'm going into the Penguin Teen box a little bit hesitant because I do not know what is in them. I haven't been to a physical in-person convention since ALA, so I'm hoping they're 2021 arcs, but I don't know. I've heard some mixed thoughts about that, so we will have to wait and see. I just hope I don't have them all. So, the first box I'm going to unbox is the Thrills from Penguin Teen. This is what it looks like. This one is green. Okay, let's see... Ooh, ooh, we have some pencils, which I will definitely put in my box. Um, one says The Haunted by Daniel Vega. Always looking for pencils at my job. One says The Haunted. Okay, so these are all say The Haunted by Daniel Vega. Yeah, they're all The Haunted by Daniel Vega, which if that's one of the books, I'll be okay with that because I don't actually have it. Um, but they're all black, and I will probably put these in um, my class, and hopefully they won't get lost. I also have some temporary tattoos, which is nice. I have a pin that says, what are you going to read? Ooh, the first is an arc that says, Harrow Lake. The last horror story she'll tell is her own. Um, things I know about Harrow Lake, it's where my father shot his disturbing slasher film, There's Something Not Right in This Town. 
Um, and this one is a mystery thriller, um, obviously. And this is this was supposed to come out in August. The next is actually a book that I've already read, and it's There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. I will admit, I didn't love this one as much. Um, I liked it, but I didn't love it. But I will probably wind up passing this on to my students because it's been a while since I read it. Um, and then the next one, ooh, this looks cool. Um, this is City of Saints and Thieves by Natalie C. Anderson. And I actually don't know what this is about. I've actually seen this in a bunch of different covers, but it's after fleeing the Congo, arrive in Kenya hoping for a better life. They can't believe their luck when Tezuan finds work in a maid for the great husband of the city's most illustrious families. But there's a dark secret lurking beneath the family's immense fortune. There's murder on the horizon. That's a very, very pretty cover. So out of three, I've only read or heard of one, which is actually not that bad. I was actually expecting for much worse reception. But not that bad. Again, I probably wouldn't have got these boxes if I did go to conventions because I would have been afraid of like getting a lot more, but actually not that bad. And I actually have some more thrillers to add to my fall TBR video, which is nice. Um, and the next one is Fantastical Worlds Unboxing. Ooh, okay. So I see some more, um, temporary tattoos. I see Phoenix Must Burn Fire, which is stickers. Ooh, I see this. This is The Valley of the Flood by Rebecca Mahoney. And this is a little desert town attracts all kinds of curious characters. A cook whose food tastes just like home. A boy who can see creatures that like to stay hidden. A prophet who knows how the story ends. And a girl whose painful memories know how... We're going to catch you up with her. In its darkest corner, secret slice. So come visit, stay a while, but be warned you could get swept away. And this is The Valley and the Flood. I've never heard of that one. It comes out in October. That sounds super interesting. Uh, and the next one is The Shadow War by Lindsay Smith. Ooh, that sounds cool. This comes out in October. And this is The World is on Fire. Read an expert from The Shadow War. And this is like a historical fiction one, I think. That sounds cool. Um, in Nazi Germany, darkness takes root. A secret war begins. That sounds awesome. I love Shadow War, that sounds cool. <gasps> Yay! And The Beasts of the Night by Tony Ambucci. I actually heard about this book so many months ago or years ago, and I never wound up picking it up, and the sequel, Crown of Thunder, is actually out. Every time it feels like forever, the sorrow that rakes my skin, the guilt that rips my mind. Um, and this is a Nigerian fantasy. And I also did get a copy of Reign of the Fallen by Sarah Glenn Marsh. And I will probably wind up rereading this book because I actually had an arc of it about two years ago when I read it and I never went up re reading Song of the Dead. I remember really, really liking this book. I don't know why I never got around to reading it. Um, and we also did get another pin from Phoenix and another penguin pin. This one had four books. That's cool. And the other one had three. So you know what? Not that bad. Out of four, five, six, I, 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 I only had two books. Um, and one I would probably wind up rereading again anyway, if given the chance. So yeah, that's actually a pretty good unboxing. I'm happy that I got this. I'm upset that I didn't get the contemporary one, but you know what? That's okay. But yeah, so I'm going to go do some other stuff, and then I'll come back and film the rest of this video for you guys later. Bye. also picked up a copy of Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is a contemporary book that has to do with, like, um... One day they're doing like a scavenger hunt after after their high school year is over, and it's like a kind of like a love hate to romance. I think that's how it's pitched out. Sounds super cool. Heather from Bookables really really liked it, and this is probably gonna be my next read this weekend. To be very honest, the last thing I want to unbox for you guys is the Bookish and the Beast unboxing in um um in in collaboration with I Ashley Poston and it's from myfanmail.com. I got a couple of their boxes, like not a lot of them, but the first thing I'm seeing is a Rain and Roses Soft Floral Rain Soy Candle. Um I I I like unboxed this a while ago. Ooh, but it smells so pretty. It smells very very florally. This is the book if those that have like not seen it. It's this book, Shin the Beast by Ashley Paston. This is the third book in the Once Upon a Con scene ser series. And this one follows 
Rosie and Vance. I don't know anything about it, to be very honest. I know that there's like a book that goes missing, I think, and there's a puppy. Cannot love it even more. Also with this one, I did wind up getting the Once Upon a Princess short story, which is the reason I got the box, because it was a pre-order, and that was like the pre-order incentive that everyone wanted. I also got this dog keychain i guess i don't know what that is but i think it's supposed to be a dog it's probably the dog for the book <laughs> if i had a guess um and i also got this starfield pin which i'll probably put on my bag um and i also got the starless throne which is like a picture i did get a book plate which i'll put in it i might wait with this because i might actually wind up meeting her eventually we also got a note from ashley and the coolest thing it's like a little notebook with like paper and stuff in it and this is one that I would actually use for work if we do wind up staying home but it's like very very shimmery and shiny um but yeah so I'm really excited for that one but yeah that's my entire book haul it was a lot of books I'll be very honest so funny when you kind of put everything together and realize how many books you have but yeah thank you guys for tuning into this big massive birthday book haul and I'll talk to you guys for the end of September for my next book haul. Hopefully if I have enough books to do one. Bye guys.